In May 2014, it will be election time and you'll get the chance to vote for new members of the European Parliament. So over the next few programmes, we're hoping to speak to all the major political parties currently representing England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. This time we're starting with Wales. So joining me in the European U studio, Derek Vaughan for Labour, uh, Jill Evans for Plaid Cymru, uh, Kay Swinburne for the Conservatives, and John Bufton was unable to be here, but his UKIP colleague, uh, William Dartmouth, is here on his behalf. Thank, thank thanks you. everyone for, for joining me. Derek Vaughan, turning to you first. Um, your constituents are going to want to know what you've achieved over the last five years. So what is it that you've been doing out here? For examples, give us some examples. Well, the first big achievement was uh, four years ago just after we came to the European Parliament. At that time, there was a suggestion that Wales wouldn't get any structural funds post-2014. But the four Welsh MEPs campaigned together and changed that. So that was a huge achievement. Uh, more recently, I've led the discussions uh, on the budget. Uh, it was suggested a few months ago that Wales would lose over £400 million in structural funds post-2014. I think I've turned that round. Uh, okay. and, and instead of losing £400 million, it looks like Wales will now gain £130 million. That's an extra £500 million to spend on projects in Wales. So money matters from Derek Vaughan. Maybe the same from you, Case Wimber, because I know economic issues are, are big for you. What have your achievements been, would you say? Well, my background is in business and finance, and so coming here in 2009 meant I came here when the financial crisis was at its peak. And so I have been spending a lot of time working on Eurozone issues here, making sure we manage the crisis. But as far as my work back home, it's all about business. It's about trying to encourage businesses to approach the single market in a positive way, make sure that they're actually getting the maximum out of, of Brussels, making sure we support them. And by doing business forums throughout Wales, that's one of the main areas that I've been able to contribute to the Welsh economy and to Welsh business. Jill Evans. Well, my, my focus has been on making Europe work for Wales and, of course, here in the European Union, it's not the Welsh Government ministers that vote and speak for Wales, it's the UK Government and the Welsh national interest is not represented. So on issues like the budget, we've seen big cuts made which cut the money come into Wales. On the agricultural policy, we've had to fight hard to keep the money come into to Welsh farmers. But I think we can do a lot more. If we have a, a really active uh, government in Wales that really wanted to build on a new partnership with Europe, I believe that Wales can, can create that new relationship and benefit in a lot of different ways. OK, William Dartmouth, your party doesn't really believe in the UK being here in the European Union, so what do UKIP MEPs like yourself and your colleague, Welsh colleague John Bufton, do when you're, when you're out here in Brussels and Strasbourg? Well, first of all, um, we're, one of the things we're here are to be the eyes and ears of the British people. So we can report back to the British people what is actually going on, because you certainly won't hear that from the other parties which are represented here. And the other thing, and, and the other reason why we're here is because, because 87,000 people in Wales, 342,000 people in, in the southwest, which I have the honour to represent, and two and a half million people in the UK, uh, UK overall, voted for there to be UKIP MEPs and voted to be represented by a UK, U, UKIP MEP and not an MEP from another party. OK, so you're the eyes and ears, you say, on behalf of your constituents. J Jill Evans, in terms of the campaign that's coming up for the elections, where are you going to be <coughs> focusing your energy uh, then? Because presumably you can't campaign on, on all fronts. Well, I think we need to be certainly having the debate in a Welsh context. We're not talking about the, the UK in Europe. We're talking about Wales in Europe and how it affects our future and how we can reclaim and, and rebuild Europe and, and make Europe really work for Wales because I believe that it's clear that it's within the European Union that Wales is future lies and that's how we're going to strengthen our economy. OK, and on that kind of note, Derek Vaughan, um, you mentioned at the beginning working together. That's uh, with your other MEP colleagues, Kay and, and Jill and, and John Bufton too. Isn't that a bit cosy from your constituents' point of view that you kind of get together like that? No, uh, we, we meet on a regular basis and we decide what we have in common. And when we have uh, uh, common interests, like uh, Wales getting structural funds, uh, certain ag agricultural policies as well, we, we campaign together. But there's many other things that we differ on. So, we so don't how can your constituents tell you apart? Well, I think part of the European election campaign next year will be between those who are pro-European and those who are, who are against Europe. And, and certainly from our point of view, we will be pointing out all the benefits Wales gets from being a part of the European Union, whether it's the 2.1 billion structural funds, whether it's the, the 2.6 
26 billion in agricultural funds, the 150,000 jobs which depend on trade with Europe. So we'll be making a positive case for Europe in those elections next year. Kay Swinburne, there's been a lot of talk recently about the rise of Eurosceptic parties like the UK Independence Party. Isn't that going to put you under a great deal of pressure come the election in May? 2014. In all fairness, we actually believe in a reform agenda and I sit here in the European Conservatives and Reformist Party and so reform is at the heart of what we do here and Europe does need major reforms and so we will be campaigning on that reform agenda making sure people of Wales know what we mean by reform, know what we mean by what we want to return to the most local level of government possible and I believe that the people actually deserve to have accountability. You can only do that if you bring power back and so we'll be talking about what we can actually return to Wales and to the UK and how we can reform the EU in order for the people to decide eventually whether or not we want to stay in or indeed whether they want to leave. I mean William Dartmouth doesn't that sound pretty good to, to you to, to what you want? Well, well, well the reformist agenda which, which, which Kay has alluded to is just simply not on offer. Uh, the, uh, Barroso, Van Rompuy, Merkel and other European leaders have made the point it's just not on offer. So basically this is a completely full, false, false perspective us. But there is a more important here, point here about structure funds, which is this, which, which, and I looked up the figures before I came, came on the programme. For every £1.65 that the people of Wales contribute to the European Union, they only get £1 back. And when other colleagues here talk about structure funds, it's simply, it's simply our money, our, our UK money, Welsh money being returned, but not before 30% of it, or whatever the figure is, has been clipped on the way. And that should be recognised and understood. Yeah, no, we've, we've got the figures for Wales, and, and Wales does benefit financially from EU membership. But I think what's more important is that there are big changes happening in Europe, not least with the Scottish referendum, and there will be change. And as the only party representing Wales and answering, answering to the people of Wales and nobody else, I think that we can play a big part in bringing that change about a real reform which means that Wales would be represented here in its own right. Uh, Derek Vaughan, Keck, um, Jill Evans feels strongly about uh, Wales being represented more strongly at a European level maybe via the Welsh Government from, from what, you're, what you're saying. Um, is there more that could be done? Your party's in office in Cardiff. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think we, we all represent the, the, the people of Wales. We were all, all elected. Uh, and so when we, uh, we do fight as hard as we possibly can to get the best uh, deal for Wales. Uh, and I think the, the Welsh Government does a good job here as well. You know, whenever you speak to anybody in the Commission, they feel the Welsh Government does a good job in terms of, of spending structural funds, for example. Uh, they often use Wales as a good example to the rest of Europe. You know? So I think Wales does have a strong voice in Europe. You've got a lot of scepticism, Kay Swinburne, about mm. the European Union, but do you accept, uh, unlike uh, William Dartmouth, that uh, things like structural, fund are bene uh, structural funds, regional funding, is benefiting uh, Wales? Well, I think in terms of, of the funding, it's about improving competitiveness. And After all, Wales is the poorest region of the United Kingdom, one of the poorest in, in Europe. And so we need to actually bring this back into focus, that where that money can be spent properly, can be spent well, we should be getting hold of it. But more than that, we should also be going after the other pots of money. And we've certainly got uh, next week a whole load of people coming out from Welsh universities to show what they're doing in terms of accessing EU research funds, which are done on a competitive basis and we're competing with the best in Europe. Okay. So we shouldn't forget it's not just about structural funds. There are lots of other benefits of EU funding too. OK, well, the European elections will take place on the 22nd of May 2014. Details on all the UK's current MEPs can be found on our website. So that's it from our look at Wales. Next time we'll turn our attention to England. Thanks very much for my guest, to my guests for joining me. Thanks very much.